Hey guys, Scott from Fry Props here, and today we're going to take a look at a uh, setup that was prompted by a question from a customer who wanted to know how he could activate a linear actuator using an escape keeper so that when his puzzle is solved, the linear actuator extends, and if the solution is removed, the linear actuator retracts. For instance, if the players were to place an object in a certain place, while that object is there, the linear actuator extends. If they remove the object, it retracts. Uh, so this is the setup that I've come up with to demonstrate that principle. We're going to take a quick look at uh, what's included here, the wiring. I'll show you the programming that I used to set it up, and then we'll demo the actual process. Okay, so the first thing we're going to want to look at is the controlling of the linear actuator. To do that, we need to use relays. That's because the outputs of the escape keeper are solid state, meaning that they output voltage directly. And because the linear actuator needs a high amperage to run, it is 12 volts, but it needs up to 10 amps in order to actuate, we can't run it directly off of the solid state outputs because, as you can see, there's a 1.5 amp limit for each output. That's good for most smaller electronics, not good for something that draws a lot of amps like a linear actuator. So we need to use relays, sort of the same principle as if we were going to control something that's a higher voltage like 110, 120 volt AC. These are single relay boards. They are 12 volts. Basically 12 volts comes in here at the bottom of the board and that switches the relay at the top. You can see we have two relays and they're just hooked up to outputs one and two respectively on the escape keeper. At the top, we've wired in the power from the linear actuator. So what we have here is we have 12 volt 10 amp power for the linear actuator coming in to the relay here. We have positive going into the normally open contact of the first relay and then we've bridged it over to also go into the normally open of the second relay. Our negative power with the 12 amps is coming into the normally closed terminal and then we've bridged that as well to the normally closed terminal on the second relay. Then we've taken the wires from the linear actuator and put the negative wire into the common terminal of relay one and the positive power into the common terminal of relay two. Basically what this setup is doing is that when relay one is on, the power is flowing to the linear actuator uh, in reverse polarity, meaning that the uh, actuator is being retracted. When they switch, when this relay turns off and this one turns on, the polarity will become uh, normal and the actuator will extend. So, On the escape keeper side we have 12 volt 1 amp power coming into the escape keeper because we just need enough to power the escape keeper itself and I've wired a proximity sensor to input 1 of the escape keeper. Now we'll go through and we'll demo the programming of the escape keeper for the uh, mode that we're going to use for this application. So to do that first thing we remove power hold down the number three button and plug power back in. And we'll keep the number three held until the LED starts flashing blue. And we can release. Now if you watched any of our other videos, you'll know that the next step will be to go through the uh, programming setup for the escape keeper. As always, we recommend having a print off available of the full manual. And this walks you through all the setup of the escape keeper. For this example, we're going to be using the input state match because basically all we want is for the escape keeper to be looking for an input number one to come on. So we're going to go ahead and our first selection, the LED is blinking once here. That means we're in the puzzle mode selection. So we're just going to choose number three for input state match and hit the number three button. Number of puzzle inputs is next. Yeah, we're only using one, so we just leave it there at one. For the third selection, we're going to actually uh, select number three, Maglock no e-stop detection. So what that means is that output number one will be on by default and will turn off when the puzzle is solved. So that means that when the puzzle's running, this relay will be switched on, which means that we will be having our uh, linear actuator retracted. So we're just gonna go ahead and select three there and hit the three button to continue. I wanted to pause here and take a second to look at why we're using the outputs we're using the way we're using them in this setup with the escape keeper. As I just said, we're going to set output one to maglock mode, which basically means it will be on at all times until the puzzle is solved when it will shut off. Output number two by default is off until the puzzle is solved, at which point it turns on. And that's why we're using output two for our second relay. 
So in this case, you can see right now that output uh, number one is on because we're in game mode. Um, the relay is on, which means that our uh, linear actuator is retracted. If we were to solve the puzzle, it'll flip-flop because output one will turn off. That's what it's designed to do in maglock mode. And output two will turn on, which is the default uh, action of output two, which will then extend our actuator, which is what we want for this scenario. Okay, so for number four, this is the auto reset timer, and we do want to take advantage of this feature. Um, usually we would just leave that off for most puzzles, but for this one, we want it to automatically reset as soon as the trigger is removed. So we're going to go ahead and use the second option, which is after the sound. And we don't have a sound, which means it'll be pretty much instantaneous. So we're gonna go ahead and dial this over to two and hit the number three button. We're not gonna use a game timer for this, and there's a special option here that we don't need for this puzzle, so we'll just hit number three. All right, so the Escape Keeper is now programmed, uh, and it's actually in game mode right now. So once we move uh, the second part of our proximity sensor close to the one that's wired to the Escape Keeper, the linear actuator is gonna extend. It'll stay extended as long as we leave the proximity sensor connected like that. In order to retract the actuator, we just remove the sensor. And there you have it. That is a way to create a puzzle where players have to place an object and leave it in place in order to keep a linear actuator extended. As soon as the object is removed, the actuator will retract. Of course, there are tons of options as far as customization uh, that you could create different sort of puzzles and solutions based around this same setup. And if you have any cool ideas like that, we'd love to hear them. Also, if you have any questions that you would like answered in a video format like this, go ahead and send us an email at sales at frightprops.com or as always, you can leave a comment on this video. All right, we'll see you next time. Thanks.